are increasingly being encouraged to move away from a one-size-fits-all model of education, being asked to think about ways in which the curriculum can be personalised to best meet each student's needs. In this programme, we look at how one school in Bristol has developed a radical approach to personalised learning and formative assessment. Does that represent the red chip there? John Cabot City Technology College is currently working towards academy status. The school has created its own skills-based curriculum in Year 7 to prepare students for lifelong learning. The school's approach to personalising learning really depends upon how successful we are in Key Stage 3 and certainly the programme we put into place in Year 7 is a major part of that. Uh, we've taken the decision to suspend National Curriculum in Year 7 and replace it with a Learning to Learn programme which all of the students do for the whole week, for the whole year and it's been hugely successful. One of the important parts of it is the links that we make with um, businesses and industries who, who support us in that programme. And many schools will have those kind of initiatives taking place with older students, but we do that with our youngest kids here. As part of their latest project, Year 7 pupils are visiting a leading department store. What do you think? Doesn't she look beautiful? This is no shopping trip, however they've come to get an inside view of how the store is run and to get the lowdown from staff on how products are marketed. We choose the selection we think would be good for our customers. So we want to tell our customers that if they want something for their dads, this is where they come and buy it. And is there anything you like about this display? It's not got feminine stuff, it's got stuff that fathers would like. I think you're right, aren't you? <laughs> it's all footballs. <laughs> and drink, look, lots of different drinks as well that dads might like. OK, so for your project this afternoon, one of the things that you could think about is who is the kind of person that I want to sell my products to and is there a particular time of year it might sell better than others? The student's project is going to be a marketing exercise. What do you think we're trying to tell customers? Um, in the summer, people are going to want to have lighter clothes and sun hats. That's right, yes. But they'll be assessed as much on how they go about the task as on the work they produce. What we're really going to be looking for in the, the finished article is team building skills. You know, did they utilise everyone's skills in the group? Did everybody get a chance to take part? Did everyone have an idea to contribute? Was everyone encouraged that they can be creative and that they can think of ideas for themselves? And communication in the workplace is so important how we communicate. Hi guys, can you come this way, please? You're going the wrong way. Shall we go round and look over here? Anything you notice about the lighting? Um, they've put lighting on like the modern things and the clothes. Very good, that's right. In teams, the students have to decide upon a household product to rebrand and market. Coming up with a marketing campaign will test their creative skills, self-discipline and team-working abilities. Curriculum leader Dan Thomas gets them going. You've got about 10 minutes to have a look around. Remember, don't go out this area. This is really good, you know. You put cereal in there with milk. Keeps it cold. My friend's got a shed, it's really good. Oh, that's a good idea. What's it called? Measuring, Measuring spoons. You put the spaghetti in it, and it measures how much. Oh my god. That is so funky. <laughs> I've admit. And it's waterproof it as well. They must be waterproof. Is that what it is? Look at these. They're oven gloves. And they're really thick, so they won't get dirty either. I've seen them on the TV. I don't like know about your mum, but when she takes stuff out the oven, all her things get really dirty. Come on. Yeah, okay, guys, we're going to go back out to the room and start your um, projects. The girls have settled on the rubber oven glove. With this unusual product in hand, they head out to the store's roof garden to brainstorm their marketing campaign. You could like put designs on it for like, say, summer one. You could have like a picture of a barbecue. Maybe can have and, like, puppets as well. <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> you no, because you're not. The food to cook. Oh, no, because no, you're, no, you're, no, you're a little baby. If you have like a little girl or a boy or something, you put a spoon in it, and it looks like a snake. 
And you can get like that, and they'll eat yeah, the food. Children. There is one oh, dying inside of this. It makes your hands sweat. Yeah, it does. But you're not going to be wearing it for a long time. When you put your hand in, it doesn't go right to the end. Yeah. So the excess here, excess material you have, maybe you could put like a little cooling thing in it to keep so you don't yeah. sweat. Now they're going to take these, the ideas of these products away, um, take them back into the college um, and decide on their own marketing strategy. If it needs redesigning, they will make that decision. What they're doing is putting together all this, all the practice that we've done through the, the year. Um, in terms of making their own decisions, following their own decisions through and evaluating that process, um, there's going to be very little teacher-led instruction work going on in this project. As they've had experience of teamwork and independent learning um, over the past nine months, um, they really can cope with this kind of a project. Back at school, the girls certainly seem to be organised. They've divided up the work according to each person's strengths. So me and Zoe liked to be um, artists, so we did all the art. And Hannah and Lauren were team leaders because they liked to lead people and they were typing as well. Then Emma got all the pictures off the internet and was like putting them all together. And Kathy helped Hannah and did all the typing because she's more into tech. So. Zoe and Hannah have a look at an AS level student's design work for ideas for their window display. She designed that? Yeah, she made that. That's what she made. It's a kitchen thing, so it could help us with our ideas. Of like that? Yeah. That would be yeah. useful. Because it's actually an idea of cooking. If we, like, like, if we draw that picture with and then an her, oven, we yeah. could, if we cut that bit off then, put a mini oven, separate that bit off, yeah. Some tasks are more interesting than others, but they're making sure they split the work evenly. We've got these team rules and we, we stick by them so that everybody gets a fair share in what they do. Right, I'll tell you what, in a minute, why don't we have a little team meeting? Right, Hannah can speak first. You'll be doing the window display with all the stands in them, so it'll just be the stands with the magic mittens and the packs standing on them. And then I'll be doing the kitchen. So are, am I doing the one with the gloves and you put the bag on the top and you're doing the kitchen with the mi magic mitten yeah. like that? The theme one. Yeah. So how about you two work together? Us two work together because it's going to be working pairs. Shall I type up the uh, the description on the computer? Yeah, if, once I finish doing I've yeah. got like, I have got to type like that and you can do that. Okay. As our group, I think we're working quite well because if you look around, the others are like just cutting things up and we've already like Hannah, she's well at or she's got it all well organised. We've had a few arguments, but I suspect every group has. Um, but we've sorted them out, and we've got a re well a really good amount yeah. of work. And, we're good and I think yeah, and the team. Well, we've all done our fair bit of work. Right. So shall we do some of this? So if we projects like this develop interpersonal skills and encourage independent learning. These abilities are key to students getting the most out of personalised learning throughout the rest of their school careers. Right, that mind track was finished a long time ago. Every marketing campaign needs a slogan, so how will the girls rebrand the humble oven glove? OK then, folks, um, today we're going to be revising Module 2 of the Gateway Science. A personalised curriculum will only benefit students if teachers know each child's strengths and weaknesses. OK, so we prioritise these uh, according to your self-assessments. A couple of years ago, science teacher Mark Allen re-examined the methods used to gauge individual understanding in class. Teachers weren't getting a clear enough picture of how each student was doing. Mark and his colleagues developed a computer program enabling students to assess their own understanding. Students which are green will support students which are amber and red. Okay? Talk them through the learning objectives using the resources on DPFL and those in front of you. The system DPFL, what it stands for is for Digitally Enhanced Evaluation and Planning. Uh, and it was born really from a, a, a re-evaluation uh, of the relationship between teaching and learning and assessment for learning. We realised that traditional assessment for learning techniques were pretty much inefficient in that not every child uh, or every student will actually get involved. They'd be left out of the process in some way, shape or form. 
So for example, um, traditional question and answering techniques at the start or at the end of a lesson, not every student either chooses to get involved in, in that process or just naturally doesn't become involved. And so that little bit of feedback doesn't make it to, to the teacher. So the bottom line is, is that using last lesson's assessments for next lesson's planning uh, was not really that possible, but it has become possible with Deep AFL. This is um, my self-assessment. This is for Module 2 of Physics, and it lists all the topics in Module 2. So you've got all the topics down the left-hand side here. And then here is how I feel about these topics. And I can change that every time I go onto it, so I can update it when I've got better at something or if I didn't understand something. And I select my level. Um, either I can do it, I can't do it, or I think I can, I'm not sure. And then once I've updated my progress, it gets like it goes onto the system. And then if I'm a red and I don't understand it, I can check and press check and it will show me who in the class does understand it so that I can ask them if I get stuck and they can show me how to do it because they've already got it on green. And then if I, don't, if I can't speak to a classmate, I can click on the topic and it will take me to a hyperlink to go onto a website or an activity which will show me how to do it and teach me the work that I didn't understand. From a teacher's point of view, on the teacher's console, it's possible to prioritise a learning, your learning objectives about what it is that you're going to teach next lesson. So lessons are not necessarily um, any longer a lesson-by-lesson lesson scenario whereby a teacher is forced to actually follow a scheme of work. It's now become one which is more driven by the needs uh, of students. And that's the powerful thing about it, is we're trying to encourage them to actually fill the knowledge gaps for themselves by using the Deep AFL system and at the same time communicate their needs uh, to the teacher, which will allow us to prioritise what we do in a classroom. OK, I'm going to check. The system presents students with different ways to fill their knowledge gaps, giving them more responsibility for their own learning. My good friend Sarah should be able to explain it to me. Let's go and find it. Yeah. How do you, um, scientists detect comets, like using their um, redshift or something like that? I don't really understand it. Could you help me? I think they use satellites and stuff. Satellites, yeah. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at? What one? 35. When a planet is further away from Earth, I think it goes into the redshift, so you can... And that's like when it starts... So the is the redshift the um, infrared wave? Yes. Yeah. So they had that they produce like electromagnetic waves, is it? Yeah. 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 And then and is that is that why it's called redshift? Because it's infrared yeah. waves, yeah? Yeah. And then you can see that they've moved further away from the Big Bang when they expanded from the Big Bang. And they're still so expanding. The universe is still expanding now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I understand. Okay. We're actually trying to develop the ability to self-assess. Um, you know, that self-awareness of what you do know or what you don't know is actually quite a mature characteristic. Um, and the ability to self-evaluate is one that we're really trying to encourage. You know, it, it actually um, ties in quite nicely with the work that we're doing in Year 7 with the competency curriculum. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's by choice that we've actually chosen to use self-evaluation as opposed to another online test. Well, it was first set up at the start of year 10 in September and um, we were told about it by Mr Allen, but um, we didn't really know what it was, no. did we? But then, because of the interactive whiteboards, you could put it up on the screen and like, went through it on the screen so we could understand it. Mm. And first of all, we didn't really use it very much. No, but we do it for our chemistry and biology as well. Yeah, for all our science and stuff. And now, because we've started like, we start to understand it now, we use it more. And now Mr Allen uses it for like, revision classes so yeah. that he knows what to prioritise and stuff. So it's really like, useful to us for our exams. It feels like better having your friends explain it to you, I reckon, because it's like different instead of like sitting in a class and having the teacher stand at the front and explain it to you. Then, and you can use the computers as well. It's just a better system, I reckon. Year 10, listen please, can you log off uh, the computers? Next time what I, what I would like you to do is to, well, for, for next time, I want you to update your self-assessments for module four, okay, which are actually on DPFL now. So go home, update the self-assessments, okay, and then this will inform me of what I need to teach next lesson. Okay, or what to prioritise. So if you could do that, that would be great. Okay, off you go. Right, John, time for our mentoring again now. 
Um, so this is the self-assessment process is augmented by a mentoring system that helps students identify weak spots in their academic performance. In the past, students may have found themselves labelled as a student who, who just is a disillusioned student. Now what mentoring does for that student is enable them and the teacher to understand exactly where it is they're struggling. This means that they then know how to go and target their weaknesses and generally if they can sort out one or two weaker areas, they feel much better about their learning anyway. So we talked about English last time, we read just now that it was a bit yeah. of a struggle in, so far and you, you weren't too confident about where it might go in your nine. Yeah. How's that t talk to me about how's that going now? Um, that's fine. My teacher, Miss Gellin, she's like um, saying that I've got a higher grade that I'm doing better, and I asked her if I could move so I can do even more better because uh, I've like other boys are hmm. like distracting me. So I moved to another table and now I'm doing fine. So you asked her if you could move? Yeah. And she was okay with that? Yeah, she was fine with that. And you're feeling a difference now? Yeah, definitely. Okay, that's really good stuff, isn't it? So let's put it down. Is there any other subjects you want to talk about? You just said you're end of year eight exams, yeah. haven't you? How have they gone generally? They're fine, yeah. I struggled a little bit on the maths one, the calculator one, but then I pulled through and then nice. I got a good mark, which was a 5B good. overall in my good. maths. And then science, I haven't heard from my teacher yet, but English, I got a 5B out of that as well. So I'm pleased with myself. So looking at those results overall, your end of year eight exams and things we've discussed so far, it seems like you're getting, you're, you're a 5B overall, aren't you generally? Yeah. Which is really good going, isn't it? Yeah. Middle safe B over, uh, middle safe five overall. Yeah, well our target of end of year nine is a five, so I've beat that right I know, now. and that's what was in the back of my mind, which is brilliant, isn't it? Miss, um, can I have a book on Brunel? Because I'm doing a project about Brunel. Sure, it's down here. In years eight and nine, traditional homework has been replaced by extension projects that allow students to play to their academic strengths through longer pieces of individual work. There's no homework timetable as such, but on our virtual learning environment, there are around about 20 assignments. And between year eight and year nine, I would expect those students to do probably between 10 or 12 of them. Um, but they're extended pieces of work, not always written work, sometimes they're about designing, sometimes they're about a presentation of some sort, but it's a really good prep preparation for Key Stage 4 coursework, which is often about extended writing rather than um, a one-off piece of work. Um, and the completion rates and the quality of the work that we're seeing in Year 8 and Year 9 around the extension programme is far more effective than when we set traditional homework in Key Stage 3. It's better than homework because you can do it in your own time and it's an overall project so you can present, present it in your own way instead of your teacher saying oh, I'll put it into your math book or something like that so you can do it into a model or poster or like anything else really. We're on the extension assignment account because you have your own account and um, here's the options, the technology you pick one um, and from performing arts you pick one. For the first one I've done African Trice which I've presented in a PowerPoint and for Brunel 200 I'm gonna I'm thinking of doing maybe a model of the suspension bridge and things that he's invented and maybe like a sculpture of his face so it'll be different to the PowerPoint. In addition to the extension projects, students must sign up for an after-school activity once a week. There's a huge range of activities on offer, reflecting both staff and students' interests. By making these activities part of the curriculum, the school recognises the value of each student's abilities, playing to all their strengths, however diverse. It's the end of the summer term. The aero engineering firm Airbus has come into school to launch the final Year 7 design project of the year. Head of People Development Duncan Greenman introduces design safety, demonstrating how aircraft strength is tested prior to manufacturing. We test one wing and we, we break that wing just to see when it will break. This is a very brief video, you'll need to watch it very carefully. The people who are in schools today 
especially around the Bristol area, are going to be our employees of the future. One of the characteristics of the City Technology College is that their, their, their kids do understand these essential values of respect, of the need to work with other people, you know, listen to what other people have got to say. Um, and that sort of transferable skill is going to be useful for wherever they go in life. The challenge that Duncan is going to set will further develop these skills. In teams, the students are going to be designing and building model aircraft, competing for the longest maiden flight. Before I tell you exactly the materials that you're going to be using to design your planes, I want you to start thinking about your ideas. This is where you be creative. I don't mind what um, colours you use, shapes you use. You need to make sure that all your ideas, all your creative ideas, go down on this piece of paper. Start off by drawing like a cylinder thingy. And the straw. Is to get the end. Yeah. Do, you, do you think, Charlotte, we should make that one point to that? Because then it will give you the wings. That's more pumping concourse design and I thought, I think concourse design works the nose of the moon. What I want you to try and do in your groups, in your teams, is to try and come up with a final design for, or a design you want to make for your aircraft. I think we should just stick to um, your design because um, then everybody can um, join in and give ideas just to one design. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a bit of everyone's really. Yeah. So. We should focus on a plane, but if we're going to make something to launch it, we should focus on that afterwards, after we test it to make sure to see if it can fly on its own anyway. So, like, Right, I'm going to give you two minutes now in your teams to think about how effective you have just been at teamwork. OK, off you go. We all helped each other out. Yeah. Said things that could help improve someone else's design. Say somebody said we were going to like, do this, then we could add, like, add to it to make it slightly better. This isn't like, you know, a job would be less work, it's individual work. If we don't work as a team, we're not going to get anything. We need to work together. We all have to put something in to get something out. We need to cooperate. Say our yeah. teamwork did go quite well. Yeah, our teamwork did go. So it went quite well, yeah. Hopefully this time yeah. it'll go better and the making as well. It's a week later and the day of the build. The teams have a range of materials laid out and their designs down on paper. We've got landing skis. Oh, which we, can, we can't use the water jets, we don't have any. Um, so, big wings, tail and yeah, polystyrene so, body. So it'll be a glider apart from that, won't yeah. it? Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, and there's our with round. changes being suggested, can the team adapt to survive? It's not what you're given, it's what you do with it that counts. The point is that the kids are thinking about their ideas and they're putting it into some physical form and then trying it out. Me and Sam are working on the ramp, so we decided that in class. And Toby and Charlotte are actually building the main bit of the plane. It can only be 50 centimetres deep. It's time to head outside for takeoff. Will the team's ingenuity be enough to get their plane airborne? I don't 
touch it. 3.9. So, what has the group learnt about designing aircraft as a team? I've learned that by keeping it simple, like we did, um, and not adding too many extra things, it can work very well. If one person ends up uh, managing to do it, make sure that the other person still feels important and that they're not just tossed to the side. OK, the winner from this afternoon is Spartan. <laughs> If parents were to ask me about the value of personalising learning, I mean, I think, I think I'd be very clear in my answer. This, this is about lifelong learning. This is about looking at the skills that you need for university, for the workplace, um, way beyond school. And, and whilst the spoon feeding culture has been effective in terms of helping children to pass exams, um, those, th th those are processes are not always in place when you go to work or when you go to university. Our programme is looking at the skills which the workplace say they need for the future workforce. Um, how can we begin to do that? And I think if we can start that at the age of 11 in year 7, that gives those children a real head start when they get to 18, 19 and beyond into their adult lives.